Orange was one of the more highly anticipated series going into this season, and on the whole I've enjoyed the first two episodes. While the dialogue has sometimes felt somewhat stilted or unnatural, the overall atmosphere has been very pleasant, with a great soundtrack, appealing visuals, and some interesting directing. That final point also caused me some concern, however, because while episode 2 had some nice moments, there were also a few scenes that I felt were poorly handled, and in such a way that they suggested to me that the series might not be respecting the audience's intelligence that much, which may be a sign of similar direction to come. Let's first discuss a scene that I thought was done very well. As Naho is sitting in class with the bento, waiting for lunch period to arrive, the shots of her teachers are interspersed with a bunch of very quick cuts, flashing images like the bag containing the bento to clue us into what is on her mind. A less interestingly directed show would have probably just had her staring at the window until a teacher called her out and asked her if she had something on her mind. But in this scene, it is left to us to pick up on the fact that her thoughts are scattered and frantic through the visuals alone. This is why a similar scene that was not handled as well frustrated me so much. The previous night, when Naho is struggling with whether or not to make a bento for Kakeru, her mother's thoughts about bringing a pamphlet to a neighborhood group mirror Naho's indecision. We are clued into this fact because everything her mother says is followed up by Naho basically making that same statement as an inner monologue. It obviously needed to do this once or twice to establish the fact that their thoughts were in sync, but we hear Naho repeat every single statement. When watching it, I thought for certain that for that final line, Naho's inner monologue would go silent and let us fill in the thought ourselves. But nope. We needed to be assured for the sixth time that they were thinking the same thing. A scene that would have felt pretty neat and witty ended up feeling condescending, like the series didn't trust me to get what was going on by the end, especially when doing the scene that way doesn't really have much of a purpose except letting us see what Naho is thinking indirectly, to fail to do so by spelling everything out. This same condescension rears its head near the end of the episode as well, during Naho's walk with Kakeru. All throughout the episode, we are presented with Naho's motherly side, by things like the sewing kit that she is carrying with her, and her proficiency with it, her ability and willingness to make awesome bento lunches, and her comment that she does housework for fun. This makes the episode's need to explicitly emphasize how motherly she is in its dialogue as well so tedious. The series does a solid job of showing without telling in order to convey this side of her, but then also feels the need to tell us. The most egregious instance of this is Kakadu's remark about it during that last scene. When it is revealed that his mother has recently died, and that that is why he doesn't have homemade lunches, I saw the relationship dynamic that was being established, with Naho being some degree of a surrogate mother figure for him. When she insists that she'll make bento for him every day, and even give him wake-up calls if he needs them, that belief is confirmed. Yet once again, Orange needs to confirm it for us by explicitly stating it, with Kakeru telling her that she really is like a mother. You could make the argument that Kakadu's first argument about her motherly nature builds his character by showing that he is now lacking that in his life. But I think it would have been far more rewarding as a viewer to just get his request for lunch, which in addition to his comment that his mother won't make lunch for him, suggests some kind of negative home life, and then have it revealed why his relationship with her is subpar. That request fulfills the same role as his other comment without reiterating things we can already observe. And indeed, the request itself is made somewhat redundant by his comment about her motherliness serving only to move the plot forward instead of also cluing us into his character like it would have with my proposed change. What was the point in subtly establishing her motherly nature if it was just going to tell us at every stage of the episode's progression exactly how motherly she is? Will every development in these characters' relationships be marked by a literal statement of that new interpersonal dynamic? Was this script perhaps written to appeal to a blind audience so that even they could be kept aware of everything that's going on? These are the questions that Orange Episode 2 has forced me to ask. I really appreciate it when a series can show me things without having to tell me them, and not a lot of series have the directing prowess to do so. So when one such series does come along, and it undermines that by also expositing those things that it conveys visually, I can't help but be disappointed, and even more insulted than I am by a series that just tells me those details. At least in that case, I can chalk it up to a simple inability to convey that information visually. Whereas with Orange, the only thing I can conclude is that the series simply lacks confidence in my intelligence and perceptiveness as a viewer. Maybe this was less a result of the overall direction and just an insecurity that Episode 2's director had. Or maybe this episode was just a quirk and the series will get a bit more subtle from here on out. I'm certainly rooting for that to occur, because I don't know how long my tolerance for the series will hold out if it fails to do so.